Welcome to the MicroLite Backup Edge video training series. The training series is designed to help you understand and get the most out of Backup Edge. This lesson is on learning to detect and configure tape drives, autoloaders, and changers with Backup Edge under Linux. The technical term for this class of storage device is medium changers. During this lesson, We'll use the term changers to refer to all devices in this category unless referring to really large libraries. In this lesson we are going to learn basic changer terminology, how to ensure that Linux has detected your changer and any tape drives, how to get backup edge to detect the changer and any tape drives, how to associate one or more tape drives with a changer, and finally, how to complete a basic default backup schedule using the installation wizard. Please note that this is part one of a three-part lesson. The other two parts are separate videos covering the use of changers in edge menu and in scheduled backups, and manipulating changers from the command line in Linux or with user scripts and programs. While Part 3 is optional and will be used by few, MicroLite Corporation recommends taking the time to view Part 1 and 2 of this lesson before attempting to configure a changer. There are four basic terms used to describe the parts of a changer, which are called elements. All element addresses start at zero and increment by one. The data transport element, or DT element, is the actual tape drive. There may be more than one. The first tape drive is referred to as DT0, the second as DT1, and so forth. The ST elements are the storage elements. These are the slots, either directly in the changer or in plug-in cartridges, that store the tapes. The first slot is ST0 the second is ST1, and so forth. The IE element is the import-export element. This is used to insert or remove tapes without opening the changer. In the larger tape library examples shown, note the I.O. ports or import-export elements designed to allow only one tape to be inserted or removed at a time. Opening the door and inserting or removing tapes manually on large devices generally forces them to perform a complete re-inventory to check for changes when the door is closed. This can be very time consuming. Using the import-export element simplifies the process. The first import-export element is called IE0, the second IE1, etc. You typically insert a cartridge into the IE element then instruct edge menu or a command line script to move it to an ST or DT element. To remove a tape, you instruct edge menu or the command line to move the tape from the ST or DT element to the IE element. In most normal instances, it is possible to move a tape directly between elements. For instance, right from an ST or storage element to a DT or tape drive element. However, in the largest of libraries, the move must be made from the source element to a robotic arm, then from a robotic arm to the destination element. Medium transport elements, or MT elements, are the robotic arms or other mechanisms used to move tapes between the other elements. Although detected and supported by Backup Edge, it is almost never necessary to directly address this element type except on the largest of libraries. Backup Edge has no practical limits on the number of elements of any type that may exist in a changer. Tapes may actually be addressed in one of two ways. By the name of the individual element where they are located, or if the changer and tapes are so equipped by the barcode label of an individual tape. If addressed by barcode label, Backup Edge will find the tape wherever it is located in the changer. For reference, barcodes are referred to as private volume tags, or PVTs, by the people that make this stuff up. Here are a few actual barcode labels from a batch of LTO tapes. To address tapes directly in the scheduler or in command line programs, precede the barcode label with BC as shown on the right. 
Normally, Edge Menu and the Scheduler require only the slot names ST0, ST1, etc., or the barcode label BC followed by the address of the barcode to manipulate tapes. It handles everything else automatically. The other elements are typically used only when manipulating the changer manually. The Linux operating system typically detects changers automatically upon boot up. Before using Backup Edge with a changer, you may check to ensure that the changer is detected by and visible to the operating system. You verify this by typing cat space slash proc slash SCSI slash SCSI at a root command prompt. Here is an example of logging in as root and typing cat space slash proc slash SCSI slash SCSI. Here you'll see each storage device the operating system has detected listed in logical SCSI bus order followed by device order. The important devices to note for this lesson are the HP Ultrium 4 SCSI device, a sequential access device or tape drive, the Quantum Ultrium 4 sequential access device or tape drive, and the Dell Model PV-124T medium changer, the actual tape changer mechanism. Make sure a tape has been inserted into any and all devices, whether or not they are part of a changer. This may be done manually for standalone devices or in changers by using the front panel keys or web interface. This helps Backup Edge detect all of the capabilities of the device. Then run the Backup Edge auto detector. This may be done during initial installation or later from Edge menu. When detection is complete, you must associate one or more tape drives with the changer. Associations may be changed at any time after initial installation. Let's examine the auto detection and resource creation that happens as part of a backup edge installation. We'll focus only on tape and changer related items. Here's the first device detected the HP Altrium tape drive. This is not associated with the changer in our demonstration setup. When using large Altrium tape drives, it is beneficial to set the backup edge block size at 256, creating larger buffers and higher performance. Here is the Quantum Altrium 4 2210 tape drive. This is the tape drive that is actually attached to our tape library. We're going to again set the edge block size to 256. Here is the Dell PV124T medium changer. Note the five options on the lower part of the screen. The first option, load after changer op, means that whenever Backup Edge moves a tape from a storage slot or import element into a DT device or tape drive, it automatically then sends a load command to the tape drive itself. This is generally not necessary except in the largest changers. The second option is unload before changer up. Whenever Backup Edge must remove a device from a tape drive, this command allows it to send an unload command to the tape drive before trying to grab the tape with the medium changer mechanism. This is necessary on most changers except for small desktop devices. It is definitely necessary for the Dell PV124T, so we'll press the space bar to select it. Barcode support is generally automatic. You should leave this option set at A for automatic unless talking to Backup Edge support and having them recommend a change. Wait for device ready is also a default. This means that whenever we do media manipulation, we watch the tape drive and wait for it to go ready before continuing. This should always be defaulted to yes. There is one additional option that is used to cover tape drives in situations where they may go ready before they're actually ready to accept a read or write command. We call this load delay. So if we were to set it to 10 seconds, Backup Edge would load a mechanism into the tape drive, wait for it to go ready, and then count off another 10 seconds before actually attempting to read or write to or from the device. Now, this screen is the Auto Loader and Resource Association screen. As you'll recall, we had two tape drives. One was in the changer, one was not. This screen allows us to set that association. Note in the green highlight that changer 0, DT0, which means the first tape drive, or in this case the only tape drive in changer 0, is not associated. If we press Enter on this screen, we'll get a selection to the right of all of our currently detected 
elements. Optical zero is not attached. The HP tape drive is not attached to the changer. But the Quantum Altrium 4 tape drive is. If we're pointed at it, we just press Enter to make the association. Note that in the Changer DT entry screen, Changer 0, DT0, is now attached to resource Tape 1. That's all that's necessary to make the association, so press Enter for Next. During initial installation of Backup Edge, you can create a default schedule. We always recommend that you do this, even if you later deselect it. If we were to select Schedule a Backup Now, a wizard will begin, which will guide us through creation of the default nightly backup schedule. First, we choose a storage resource. In this instance, we're going to select the tape drive attached to the changer. Whenever we do select a tape drive attached to a changer, Backup Edge will ask us whether we want to actually use the changer, and we should generally accept that by selecting Use Auto Changer. Now it wants to know the time, and in this one instance where we have a tape changer as the active storage resource, Backup Edge will pop up a wizard allowing us to select and manipulate the tapes. In each of the spaces to the right of the day selections, there is an extra field. This is where we can select the tape or tapes to be used. For instance, ST0, ST1. This would tell Backup Edge on Mondays to use the tape in ST0 first, then, if it fills, the tape in ST1. For normal instances, you only need to use one tape from one slot. On Tuesday, we can use the tape in ST1 or slot 1. On Wednesday, we may choose a barcode. So if we pick one of our barcodes, we can select that tape. Again, on each slot, we can choose to select either a slot name reference or a barcode reference to the individual tape we want to use on that day. This is the actual full schedule screen showing all of our selections. Note that if we pick a line item in the window and press Control D to edit it, you'll see the media list either by tape barcode or slot number that was selected. Note that Backup Edge has much more scheduling power than just one backup per night. See our Advanced Scheduler lesson for additional information. We'll skip the rest of the installation screens at this point. The first time you launch Edge Menu after an installation, you'll be warned that no primary resource has been selected. This is because the storage resource currently being manipulated by Edge Menu may be different from any single schedule. If you select a tape drive attached to a changer, as we are doing here, you'll again be asked if you want to use the auto changer. Press Enter to default to Yes and get to the Edge Menu home screen. Note that the white box on the bottom shows that the primary resource is your tape drive and the changer resource is your changer device. Your changer is now configured properly for use with Backup Edge. Part 2 of this lesson addresses use of tape drives by Backup Edge both manually within Edge Menu and automatically within a backup schedule. Part 3 of this lesson addresses manipulating the changer and tapes either from the operating system command line or from within your own programs using the edge.changer program and its rich programming interface. Thanks for watching part one of this lesson. Enjoy our products. Please check www.microlite.com for additional information and more videos. Thank you.